Let's talk a little bit about gamification in education. There are different types of games, of course. There's gamified learning activities, games like Math Blaster, Bad News, Organ Trail, Pandemic, Escape Rooms. There's also single player games. And again, these are things like Math Blaster, Organ Trail. There's multiplayer games, uh, things like escape rooms that you have groups of people that work together to uh, complete the game. And then another type of gaming is active versus immersive games. So for example, uh, virtual reality archaeology dig site would be a good example of, of an immersive game. So are educational games as effective as learning tools? Well, the shorter answer is that it depends. So yes, uh, some can be done, educational games can be done really well, others not so much. So here are some of the key features of effective educational games. The first thing would be to include instruction and explanations about the underlying concepts. And this screenshot from Bad News does a good job of this. You can see the Tell Me More icon down at the bottom here, so that if someone isn't sure why they maybe didn't do as well as they thought they can, they can find out and learn more about that topic so that when they try again, uh, they can do better. Another thing would be to include adaptive scaffolding and mechanisms for guidance. And that informational, uh, in, that information that's available on demand is one good way to g give that guidance optionally or it can be given explicitly if someone makes a, a more significant mistake in the game. Again, depending on the gameplay. The next thing to keep in mind is that it's always good to offer gameplay that offers just doable chances. You wanna be in that sweet spot so it's not so easy that people get bored or too difficult that they give up just because they feel like they can't win. You need to be in that sweet spot and how you develop the game and how you program the game can help make that um, make that gameplay that's doable and calibrate how difficult or how easy you need to make things based on how they're doing in the game in real time. Another important thing is to give people immediate feedback on how they're doing, and an easy way to do this is by an in-game score. So you can give them feedback, uh, for example, in Bad News, if you don't do well or if you make a mistake, you'll lose followers. If you do really well or somewhat well, you'll either gain some or a lot of followers. So that immediate feedback can be very helpful uh, so that people can know whether or not what they did was effective uh, and do it again or maybe not effective and avoid doing that in the future. You also wanna promote a learning attitude without time constraints or penalty scores. Uh, and the video that we watched about the Gruber video was a great example of that. People who, um, who just don't lose a score will tend to persist longer in a game uh, than people who lose scores. And if they get frustrated, they'll, they'll give up more quickly. So try to promote that learning attitude. So in summary, uh, whether or not you have a good game largely depends on, you know, whether or not instruction and explanation is of the underlying concepts are built in and easily available. Two, uh, whether or not you've included adaptive scaffolding and mechanisms for guidance. Three, offer gameplay that enhance the player's sense of autonomy. Four, offer gameplay that offers just, just doable challenges. And related to that, five dynamic in-game scores that provide learning, progress, and feedback. And lastly, promote a learning attitude, which allows for failure uh, without any uh, punishing uh, going on in the game that allows for retries and reflection without time constraints or penalty scores. Anyways, I hope that helps.